An argument can be made that since Avengers Endgame, the peak of the MCU, Marvel has been flailing around looking for their next big thing, trying to recapture the good old days when fans actually showed up to their movies. They recently have been taking meaningful steps to slow down their decline, namely releasing less cinematic and Disney Plus content, but does that mean their upcoming shows will be of a higher standard than what we've come to expect in recent years? Join me as I take a look at the latest MCU spin-off and see if the saving grace of the MCU was Agatha all along. And be sure to like this video for more Marvel content. <laughs> You're watching Matthew Rogers. I have never classified myself as a dedicated Marvel fan, rather a pained DC loyalist starved for quality superhero content. And it won't be until 2025 that the DC universe will get its long overdue overhaul. So in the meantime, I dabbled in the Disney Plus Marvel shows as they have released. I've seen WandaVision, which I liked a fair bit, a great concept with great characters executed almost perfectly, but I quickly lost steam watching The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Moon Knight, Loki and Hawkeye, not even bothering with She-Hulk, Secret Invasion and God knows how many more movies. After some self-reflection, I realised I was watching these shows as a chore, only to satisfy the completionist in me. Interestingly, Marvel execs actually addressed this issue at a recent CinemaCon in Vegas, saying, quote, There was a lot of pressure post-Avengers Endgame on the public to feel obligated to watch absolutely everything in order to watch anything. Part of the rebranding was a signal to the general audience that we're creating a lot of options, and you can follow your tastes within this brand. Some will be more comedic, some will be more dramatic, some will be animated, some will be live action. Marvel is more than just one thing, it's actually many different genres that happen to coexist in a single narrative." End quote. Some dedicated fans were upset that the countless hours invested into watching every piece of Marvel media just to understand a 10 second niche reference may have been in vain, but I see this as an absolute win, as now I can just watch the shows I'm actually interested in without the filler lore around it. I guess we'll have to see how many references to the wider MCU will be included moving forward. Then comes the announcement of the WandaVision spin-off for Agatha Harkness, firstly named House of Harkness, then Coven of Chaos, then Dark Old Diaries, just to confuse everyone's public image of the show, just like Agatha does, later revealed to be just named Agatha all along. It seems their marketing team still has what it takes. Spoilers for WandaVision I suppose, but Agatha was the runaway fan favourite as soon as she was revealed as the primary antagonist of the series, able to go head to head with Wanda's powers and breaking her fourth wall. The last we saw her though, her mind is trapped in the Scarlet Witch's town of Westview. WandaVision so far has only proven to be a setup for the Doctor Strange sequel, and although the movie was flawed, the Scarlet Witch had so much more foundation and motive as a villain because of the show's lore, and they have set up a kind of twofer now that they're getting a second piece of media from the show, with Agatha already being established. And I guarantee this Agatha series will return the favour by setting up a solo Scarlet Witch film, with some sort of an end credit scene cliffhanger. Viewers like myself appreciated the campy retro villain aesthetic that Katherine Hahn brought to the character. For me, she single-handedly carried the show, so although I've checked out of all Marvel content at this point, I will be watching for more Agatha. And they obviously know their target audience, putting Florence's Seven Devils in the teaser. But here's what I'm looking for. Firstly, lose the quote unquote, he's standing right behind me isn't he humour, and replace that with campy, self-aware, unserious dialogue in the vein of something like Scream Queens. Secondly, as Patti Lapone has all but confirmed this is a musical, yeah. And it's a musical. All right. <laughs> love her, let's ham up those two, Broadway choir style, no solo woe on me soliloquies. Side note, it's still so funny to me that these studios refuse to market their projects as musicals, hoping to trick musical haters into watching their content. Hilarious. Finally, people are upset that some of the characters like Billy or Wiccan has been recast and made to be too flamboyant. It's a bit early to make that call, but I'm all for this if they keep that energy for all characters, not just those that are LGBTQ+. One more thing, just please use the Agatha All Along theme for the opening titles, it would set the right tone immediately. 
It was kind of an interesting concept to open the teaser with a serious forensic investigation plotline, and although this intrigues me, I acknowledge it would undermine everything I just said by making it a self-serious tone instead. But it looks like this aesthetic is quickly being replaced with Halloween witches and their mascot, Aubrey Plaza. Curse you all! Harriet, oh. I curse oh, oh, you oh, oh, to oh, have oh, a happy just, holiday! It took a little turn there at the end! No, oh, I said happy holiday! Okay, there you go, Aubrey, Aubrey Plaza, her. thank you! <laughs> <laughs> Putting Han, Plaza, Lapone, and Locke together as the main cast is obviously to cover all the demographics that asked for this show in the first place, which had me thinking about Marvel's oversaturation problem. Could this be seen as a desperate attempt at fan service? Probably. Is that maybe the only way they can get bums in seats at this point? Perhaps. So although fans who have completely checked out of the endless multiverse could look at this and say, who asked for this? Maybe the ones that did represent the ever-shrinking relevancy to keep Marvel afloat, at least until the harbinger of doom that arrives in the form of 2025 Superman comes to put the final nail in its coffin. But what do you think? Let me know. Until next time, you can keep up with what I'm watching by following me on TikTok, Twitter, and Letterboxd, which are all linked in the description. But for now, this is Matt Rogers, and that is all.